everyone, Electro here. I just want to show you guys a technique today that I've been using for a while. It's um, maybe relevant to the 3D printer guys. It's a, it's a way of uh, casting on to metals. So the advantage of this is you can have a custom shape. You can make the custom shape whatever you want. You can 3D print it in the appropriate plastic or you can make it out of wax and plastic as this one is. All this is is a plastic tube and I've modified the, the shape with wax. Um, that's the, sp the sprue on there. This is just a reservoir to help to aid with the casting technique. Uh, that's it being placed in the ring. That's the, the casting ring there with the pieces placed in it. And that's the investment material poured in. Now what I've effectively done with this is made a mould which holds these pieces, these metal pieces in there after I heat, it, I heat the mould up. Yeah, all the wax and the plastic will burn out so you can imagine there'll be a vacant spot around there with the um, with the sprue running to it to let the molten metal into the cavity that we we're trying to copy there so that's it in the furnace with it burning out uh, these are the metals I'll be casting it with this is a 65% gold and 26% uh, palladium with a few other metals in there. This is one of the bio alloys that I use because basically these castings are going into somebody's, they're bolted to somebody's body actually. So they have to be reasonably good quality or very good quality materials for them to be biocompatible. Now, uh, that's the setting for the casting machine. I'm using a ceramic cru crucible, not a graphite insert crucible. I'm using, as I said before, it's a gold palladium based alloy, which is a bio alloy. Uh, that's pre melting the alloy there. At, the, at this present time, it's only using 1700 watts. And um, that's the vacuum settings for the, for the chamber. When the machine melts the metal, it does it in a vacuum environment to minimize oxidation of the metal. Therefore, when you cast it, it'll be a lot cleaner. Your castings will be a, a lot better finished. In, a lot easier to handle, so that's it there. That's oops, yeah, that's the machine after it's cast. The chamber it turns and that will pour the metal from the crucible into the casting, and that's followed by a compressed air surge to help force the molten metal into the casting. Now, after that's done, uh, break all the investment apart and they're the castings. Now you can see the metal has rolled up into the casting and that's it. Now after you sandblast that this is effectively what you get. Uh, it's the same sort of thing. Now this particular one you can see the casting is hollow and you can see down the bottom there there's a screw seat because as I said this thing will bolt onto an implant. So that's the reason why we needed a machined fit for the accuracy but also we need a, um, a custom shape made on this in metal. Now we do use uh, laser metal sintering for the production of some of these frameworks but the problem with laser metal sintering is the actual finish. Now good castings uh, you can see that surface finish there, apart from the wax not being um, totally smooth before I cast it, but the finish there is quite good. Well, laser metal sintering doesn't give you a finish quite that good. So for uh, an area where you need a machined metal finish, even laser metal sintering can't really produce the goods. So effectively, this is, this is a, a good way of making a really accurate metal casting but it's really really cheap and effective way to do it um, there, there's the join there you can see that the it's cast all the way up to the the edge of the gold now this is a gold alloy and that's a gold alloy they are different alloys and the thermal expansion isn't exactly the same but because it's metal on metal that's okay. If it was ceramic onto metal, it would be a different thing. Because I can do this procedure too. Instead of casting it with metal, I can inject it with ceramic. However, the difference being is 
that the cast on pieces have to be titanium because that's the that matches the coefficient of thermal expansion of the ceramic that I'm using. With metal, uh, you can just use a different metal to be close enough. It doesn't really have to match, but it can be close enough to the metal that you're casting. It's just that this metal here, the base, has to melt slightly higher than the casting. Otherwise, when you melt this metal to cast onto this metal, it'll just melt that. So the only difference there is um, the difference in melting temperature. But in a nutshell, this is a really cool, cheap and effective way to give you custom metal pieces and if you do it right you can get an accuracy of these investments down to 7 micron in dimensional stability so basically there's, there's not much you, you can't do so anyway just an idea I thought you guys might be interested in something like this as I said for all the 3D printer guys they can print pieces if they need like threads or anything like that leave the nuts in invest them and cast them and you you can get something like this with a machine surface or a nut fixed into position or whatever you want um, out of most metals and you can do that yourself and you can get results which will rival much much more advanced technology but with good practicing working skills you can get the same results with a fraction of the cost anyway um, post your comments thanks bye